I'm from a town of 900 people outside of Waco, Texas. <laughs> okay, some of you are fans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know how to read, but I do know how to cook. Meth. Uh, I'm very good at cooking meth. <laughs> Uh, I came out as non-binary over a trash fire. Uh, that's real, we were burning trash. And just for fun, uh, as a family activity, we were, <laughs> we were watching my father's favorite recliner go up in flames. And I said, yeah, this is the appropriate time to talk. <laughs> this is the optimal moment. <laughs> this is the optimal time. And I was like, listen, mom, dad, I gotta tell you something, I identify as non-binary and in simplest terms it means like I'm not a man, I'm not a woman, I'm just kind of in the middle. And um, my, my dad looked at me and he hugged me and he was like, buddy, we love you. Nothing you can say or do will take that away. You will always be our daughter. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like he, it was like the Matrix, you know? <laughs> almost got that Carrie Sturridge gold medal. We almost got it. <laughs> My mom was pissed. She was like, so you ain't eating meat, <laughs> you know? I was like, what? <laughs> You're a vegetarian now? <laughs> I was like, throws on another bag of trash. <laughs> I was like, newsflash, I have never eaten the meat. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't know what to do with the wiener. <laughs> okay, up top. <laughs> I would be like, me too, you know, just like shimmy it up. Okay, no dykes in the crowd, all right. <laughs> Talking about strapping it on, okay. <laughs> I was clinically diagnosed as big boned in the fifth grade. My dog, big boned, somebody said, what? <laughs> okay, Queen of England over here, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I weighed 185 pounds in the fifth grade. That's a big girl. That's a strong child. Um, but my mom was concerned and she took me to the doctor and was like, does she got a thyroid problem or something? <laughs> and I was like, no nah, dog, you're feeding me like hot dogs like I'm a dolphin, you know? So I was like, ah! <laughs> like <laughs> But the doctor was like, no, Mary, she's big boned, strong girl, hefty. He was like picking up my legs, you know, like, let me see her haunches. <laughs> my God, she's gonna collapse under the weight of her own bones, Mary. Get us some more milk. <laughs> she needs some more whole milk. <laughs> she's gonna be a mighty fine shot putter one day. <laughs> And I was, <laughs> all the way to state, baby. Um, shot put, if you don't know, is a sport where you take a solid 10 pound iron ball and you nestle it in between your ear and your shoulder. You know, gently, <laughs> real gentle. And then you crouch down real low and then you think about the woman you love, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're just like, Sandra Bullock! And then you hurl a cannonball. <laughs> That's it. And then you just wipe your hands off. You just hang out with all the other big bones, you know? <laughs> How far did you throw it, Tiffany? <laughs> you know? Not far enough, <laughs> you know? <laughs> shot put's the gayest sport. Um, and I played softball. Um, shot put is gay, dog. <laughs> I did buy a shot put over the pandemic. Um, you can buy a shot put off Amazon. Right now, it will show up to your house in 48 hours. Um, I got it, and um, it didn't come in a box. There was just a loose cannonball <laughs> on my steps with a sticker on it, um, <laughs> which is kind of like fucked up, because all day, like that chopper was just like going up and down the goddamn Amazon van, just loose. <laughs> Just a loose cannonball, and then somebody had to just be like, motherfucker. <laughs> put it on the steps, hope it doesn't roll down. I thought shot put alone was gonna be really fun. Uh, it turns out nobody just wants to roll a ball back. I was like, you wanna come play? You wanna come play? I'm gonna throw it at you. 
You just roll back. <laughs> just roll back. I'm gonna throw it, you're gonna roll back. I don't want you to throw it back. <laughs> no, that's not the game. <laughs> All of my friends are like, you're in your 30s. I was like, shut up! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Instead, I'm just out there. Apart, lonely as hell. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> do you mind? I'm trying to. Hurt. I'm trying to. Kids are playing. I'm like, do you mind? Can you get these kids? Can you get these kids? Hello. Can you get these kids? I look like a maniac. Can you get the kids out of the way? I have a cannon ball. Olympic size. <laughs> I'm at a public softball field, just like my old stumping rounds, just like putting dirt on my head, just like going into war. Oh man, two minutes, where does the time go? I don't know if I want to talk about shrimp or what, man. I got two minutes. I got two minutes. I have a starry night. I have a Starry Night tramp stamp. That's real. This, <laughs> I have, it's, I found out about Van Gogh when I was 21 at Temple Community College for the first, yeah, that's right. It took me three years to get a two years associate degree. I'm fucking brilliant. <laughs> fucking moron. But I remember seeing um, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night for the first time in my life. I was like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen this. And I didn't know how to resize an image, so I just printed it out. And now I have this weird rectangle on my lower back of starry night. But here's the deal, I hated the buildings. So I just have starry night, just the sky. I went to a tattoo parlor that day with a printout of Starry Night, and I was like, I want it here. No buildings. I hate the buildings. Just the wavy parts. <laughs> Just rabid. It looks like a fucking Hobby Lobby calendar bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. When I bring someone home, I'm like, listen, just so you're aware. <laughs> I didn't think about my tattoo placement. I have some right here, right where the fold hits. And depending on my weight, I don't. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Y'all are incredible. I'm Ever Maynard. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much.